Hey there guys, this is Flamzeron, aka YouTube's Toss and this is the 33rd episode of the Wineverly Update. It's kind of been a while. Sorry there hasn't really been a video that much. I know I said that in my last videos, but I had finals and college, which was actually kind of stressful and busy. But I decided to kind of take this time to talk to you guys about the stuff I've been doing. I uh, haven't really been doing too much, and uh, the last volume of the Negima manga comes came out I think a few days ago I need to buy it and I'll probably read and then I'll probably do my thoughts on the finale kind of like what I did with the finale of Dragon Ball which I think the cons and bonds actually coming out in North America potentially I don't know maybe but that's definitely something to look forward to and there's also a visual novel that I recently completed like an actual official one I feel like I can say I'm a big boy now. So I'll talk about that too, as well as its sequel and my thoughts on the series in general, which I'll have to get to at some point. But for now, why don't we just talk about the uh, things that I've been doing lately at this moment in time. First and foremost, I should probably let you know that I finished E7 finally. Yay! I finally beat my first E game. Um, got to the final boss, which was, you know, obviously Tia, if you know the storyline. Spoiler, sorry. Um, and the, it kind of splits you up, so you have to, at near the end, because you obviously fight it a second time, it being the final boss, not necessarily Tia. Hint, hint. But, it splits up your party, and my plan was just to level up everybody, I think mainly just because I might have switched between the characters, because that's what the game wants you to do. They want you to switch characters to do stuff, even though they give Adol a weapon that covers all three of the types of weapons, so you don't even have to switch to anyone else besides Adol. Just stick with him, and he'll be friggin' invincible. Ah, Adol's fucking broken. Anyway. So, you fight the final boss, and I finally beat him. Because I was just like, you know what, I'm not going to waste my time to level up all these people. I can just use, like, <coughs> Dogi, Aisha, and Adol. So I did that, beat the final boss, finally, I'm like, and I used up all my resources. I was actually, I would have been pissed if I had done Like, yes, I finally beat the game. So I could finally kind of focus a little bit more on something else. Like the, uh, a different PSP game, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, story, you know, Altago is saved, or at the ending, Altago is saved, but Tia has to go away because she's the Iskin goddess, and Iskin fever is gone, and the dragons are leaving, so it's up to the people, it's like they're, it's like the creators watch Dragon Ball GT, because, you know, the Dragon Balls go away at the, anyway, um, and then Maya, she comes up and, surprise, surprise, she talks! Um, they seem to hint that uh, es the Iskin fever was uh, affecting her ability to talk, but I still found it a little cliche that at the end when Tia goes away, she starts talking. It's like, Tia, don't go. My clitoris needs you. <laughs> um, and like Tia's like, no, I have to go, I have to go do other things, but maybe I'll come back and visit after Altago has been cool. And then Adol and Dogie leave, probably with Geis. Or rather, Geis probably found another way out. But, yeah, it was a nice game. Uh, it was one of those RPGs where there's no um, uh, clear data. Which, I like having clear data because it kind of gives me an, a, a sense of complete, completion-ism-ness. But, at the same time, you know, I did beat the game. I don't really need to prove to anyone that I did, so. That's done. Yay. I can move on to something else. Like going back to Fade Extra. <gasps> Fade Extra? For those of you who don't know, Fate Extra is a uh, spin-off PSP RPG in the Fate Stay Night series. I played more of it. I um, I was at the uh, second um, servant at the time, 
who I suspected already was Robin Hood, just based off of what I could gather from him. And uh, when I finally beat him, it did reveal to me that it, it was a Robin Hood. I kind of like that when you beat the servant, it just reveals everything. I really like how, I might have said this before, but I really like how the game has such a visual novel feel. Like, I feel like I'm playing the visual novel, but in an actual, like, game form. Like, I feel like this is a good alternative to the visual novel. If you want to play, like, a game version of Face Down. It's not the same story, obviously, but it's still a nice little thing they've got going on. Um, the gameplay, I feel like, is hit or miss. I mean, it's an... Rock, paper, scissors kind of battle system, so obviously it's based off of just kind of guessing and guessing correctly. The game kind of gives you the chance to learn more about your enemies based on fighting them repeatedly or, in Servant's case, doing more research. So it gives you more of an edge to win, but, you know, that's uh, that's a thing. And for the most part, you can kind of guess... I mean, once you get the habit down, because a lot of enemies, they use the same kind of habit. So you can kind of, or the servants use a lot of, this, use like a habit. Like they use like the same stuff kind of over and over, even the stuff that you can't read. So you can, you can kind of figure out how to do things, which can help you win. Like I won against Robin Hood by like a mile. Like, I was worried, because the game kind of seems like if you don't have enough information, it almost seems like that you can't win. But I kind of like the game giving me the chance to, um, what do you call it? Uh, beat the system, I guess. And throw it on the ground. Anyway. Um... So, that's a thing, and then I got to the... A uh, third servant, which is Alice, you know, the game kind of tells you, uh, you, the game kind of hints that to you really quickly, or you can kind of tell if you know how s stories, w you you can tell, if you have a brain, you can tell, <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, I, I met that fight, haven't gone back, kind of took a break, so I was just kind of playing it just to kind of kill time, so. Yeah, I'll probably move on to something else. I don't really know what. Maybe do a decim because I still need to finish that game. I need to fin. I, I want to be done with it. I'm the PSP is to me is like almost like a like a project or like going to work or going to school. It's like a project. You have to get it done, and you just want to get it done so you can move on to the next thing. It's kind of sad, really. I hope the V doesn't ends up not like that. Of course, the a lot of people are saying the V is not doing so well. I think it'll do okay. We'll just have to wait and give it time. But anywho, uh, next thing. Next thing I did, which probably sounds weird. I just want to let you guys know that I've gotten into the habit of recording these in parts as opposed to just recording one long thing. That's easier for me to get the kind of quality that I want in these videos and make it a little more organized. But anyway, I'm going to do Tales of the Abyss next. Um, I was I uh, play the arena and... With Luke, and I finally beat the advanced arena, and so got his soul crush, which is supposedly his strongest weapon. I mean, that's kind of cool. So I got that, and then I decided. This is on the PS2 version, by the way. Um, as the screen shows, I would have shown the 3DS version if I were talking about that. But I um got the soul crush, and that was nice and all. And then I started thinking, well, you know, my Ash file, because I game sharked Ash into my file, so it still had Luke's profile picture, even though I had Ash in the game. And it still showed, like, Ash's, like, status and, like, the little menu and um, his uh, status art and whatnot. So, according to the game, I had Ash, but when I went to battle, it would show, like, Luke's little status thing. And that really pissed me the fuck off. So I decided that I would um play the new game and um, do New Game Plus and just kind of uh, do the map trick to get Ash to my party because then I'll just have Ash just in general. And plus he scales to Luke's level 
if you do the mushroom side quests, so I won't have to grind with them as much. Won't be able to equip much with them, but do I really need to? I mean, the point of doing that is to get a different character, to get a different kind of experience. I mean, he might be a little weaker equipment-wise, but power-wise, he should be able to do just fine. You can unlock his stats, and I th or unlock his um equipment. I think that's because you end up getting him um, regularly one last time before he goes away for good, I think. Not entirely sure, but I'll have to um see. But, so yeah, I decided to uh, do it on New Game Plus. I carried over my arts. I wanted to carry over my titles. But then I realized that uh, it didn't really ma matter because I was going to re-get them anyway. Or try to re-get them. And I also want to try to get Indignation for Jade, which I think... Nick would enjoy more. He probably would play Tales of the Abyss more with me if I had Indignation. Plus, I like Ash as a character. He's like one of my favorite Magic Knights to use, so. Um. And also, I carried over my um, mini game data because I think that's going to help with the call. If not, then I'll be pissed. But. If it does, that'd be great, because whenever I'd Game Shark Ash to my party, it wouldn't let me do the arena. But I think that's just because I when it, you Game Shark them, uh, you get them from the time the game allows you to really have them in place of Luke. I don't know. Maybe if you uh, hack them in from another slot, you'd get a more updated um, Ash. Which, actually, that's not a bad idea. Uh, you might have to do a little bit more work with the coding, I think, to really figure out where, um, I'd have, to, you'd have to, you'd have to really check. It doesn't matter what character you put in that slot, but you'd still have to check where the character kind of came from. If you really wanted to see where they go, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna do that at some point. I also need to finish um I'm gonna eventually make a point to play all my ports and of um the Tales games like I need to do Tales of Destiny 2 on the PSP Fantasia full voice edition I don't even care about um Anari Kiri Dungeon Cross it's the same game um I also need to finish Anari Kiri Dungeon Cross anyway um since it, it comes with two games um, maybe get Tales of Rebirth at some point. Need to do some funny on the PS2 and also need to do Vesperia on the PS3. Which I want to play them myself as opposed to get... I want to play Vesperia because I just kind of want to do it my own way. I don't want to play someone else's save because people have a different way of playing and I kind of play the Tales games a little differently. And with Vesperia, I'm going to try to make a point to have the, um... Uh, all the weapons since I feel like the game will try to get me out of getting the weapons later on. So yeah, we'll eventually go on a big Tails binge just to kind of catch up on just my Tails game completion rate in general, even though I'm technically caught up. And but with Symphonia, for the GameCube version at least, I've heard that they give you enough slots to have both Cross and Zealous in your party, giving you a full party. But what I'm thinking about is how exactly do I want to do that? Because one option is to... Uh, go the Kratos route and Game Shark Zealous in, but then that means I lose all of uh, Zealous's um, stuff. Um, depending on what you do. I mean, if you can do the formal quest before um, before leaving, then that's I know you can do the mask one before leaving. But that'd be kind of a shame to only get one um, one costume for him. Or doing the Zealous route, which would give me more stuff to work with. And Game Shark and Kratos. Which I think would be bad because then I would he would lose like a lot of his um stuff. Or he would be really, really under leveled potentially, you do get him back regularly when you do the um, 
when you do the end of a uh, disc one, which I thought was really cool. I was almost excited that I got Kratos back. I'm like, I'm putting him back in my party. <laughs> um, what else? And another idea was maybe doing New Game Plus, and instead, um, just game sharking Kratos into the Zealous route because, and then bringing over the arts and the titles because then I'll have everything. You know, that's my thought process. At least I might just do two separate files because I feel like that'll be easier personally because I don't want to do really. And plus, you know, having two separate files kind of gives you a reason not, you know, because it means like, okay, well, why play this one? Well, because this one is different. Or, you know, why play that one? Because that one's different. That kind of thing. But I've rambled long enough about Tales of the Abyss. Still need to finish the friggin' 3DS version. Currently the really only 3DS game I have right now that I actually really... That and Luigi's Mansion and, of course, Project Cross Zone that's going to come out soon. And still need to get Kingdom Hearts. Man, the 3DS is doing better than the Vita. I'm a little disappointed. Anywho, next game. Which is Dark Souls. I've been playing both a new file in preparation for Nick's new playthrough, like I told you before in my previous video. But also my uh, other um, one. I mean, obviously I played through the DLC. Got through that on my main guy, my new Game Plus guy. And I also started mix and matching his uh, armor set. Like I gave him Solaire's helmet, uh, the black iron gauntlets, the uh, elite knight armor uh, chest. And I alternate <laughs> between the uh, steel armor um, leggings and the black, um, iron leggings. I've been trying to mix match stuff more f effectively because I'm trying to give my guy a more unique look, look instead of just, um, just giving him just a full sex. I mean, that's cool and all, but that's almost kind of boring. You know, you want your character to stand out. But, anywho. Um, I was on New Game Plus. I, uh, Pretty much, I've been watching Epic Name Bros videos and doing his watching his strength weapon uh, playthrough, and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try using the Man Eater Serpent Sword and powering it up, as well as uh, going back to using a Lightning Balder Side Sword, as well as making a uh, raw one and a crystal one, and uh, turning my Chaos Fire Sword into just a regular Fire Sword. Um, I, cause I got Vamos and whatnot, actually really finished up a good bit of stuff, um, went through, uh, the Duke's archives, uh, pretty flawlessly in my opinion, um, got that done, I kept trying to do the little trick so I could skip a bit of the game, but I decided just to go through just the regular way, I unlocked, a uh, Big Hat Loken for once, so I can actually, I actually have access to him again, um, so I get spells from him. He's starting to go kind of crazy. Because at this point I've killed Seath the Scaleless. So. Um, and by the way, I soloed him. <laughs> um, I wanted to get the uh, Moonlight uh, Greatsword. Because I wanted to kind of have sort of... Because that's a Kingsfield reference. So I wanted to kind of have that little reference. Maybe I'll get it in this game. Maybe Dark Souls 2 will be my big game. But... So I tried getting it, tried using the epic name bro strategy of luring him to his crystal, having him destroy his crystal, then attacking him while he was down or whatever. But instead, I, I kept failing, so I just decided just to tank him, which I did, and I friggin' pooped on him. Now, beating that made me want to try and beat the Fire Sage. Or actually, it was the being the Fire Sage that made me want to beat Seat the Scaleless. That was the one I really had to tank. <coughs> like, for some reason, like, he was just really hard. Like, I find, I think he's probably the hardest boss in Dark Souls next to, uh, the, um, next to, um, like, actual, like, difficulty. Because there are bosses where, like, uh, they're just hard because they beat you a lot. But I feel like this guy was just really hard. Like, in the four, 
I just feel like he was tough, just in general. Just really, really tough. But, I was able to beat him just by tanking the fuck out of him and, and fat rolling. <laughs> I try to put more dodging into my play style. Uh, I mean, Dark Souls is one of those games where you can tank things. I feel like they should focus more on, um, or I wish they'd focus more on making the game more accessible and and letting players choose how they want to play as opposed to just basically forcing them to choose all the strong weapons because I feel like that takes away the role playing, which I'll get more into when I talk about what I think, what I'd like to see in Dark Souls 2, which will be another video at some point. Probably the next one. Um... So I did that. Then I went through Lost Isolith. Uh, took care of Solaire just to kind of put him out of his misery. Um, I was, th I'm thinking for my other file, I might try to save him if I can. I mean, I might get to a point where I won't, Nick won't really need me anymore. But in case he does, I'll definitely be there to help out. Um, but I'm thinking if I can try and save him so I can have him help me with, have uh, Solaire help me with the Gwen fight. Um, but anyway, back to the other character, my main character. I took care of the Bed of Chaos, tried doing the arrow trick, but I had a little trouble, so I just went in, like, just hit it. I did die a few times, so I lost the a lot of amount of souls I got. But I finally was able to, uh, reach the little thing where you walk in there. <clears throat> And uh, kill and cut the giant thing. So I was able to get that done. I think I ended up getting a little bit more souls than I had before. Which was nice. Because I was a little bummed that I lost all those souls. So I got that done. Then I got Seat the Scaleless done. And so I decided I only have one thing left to do. I can beat the four kings. And so I try that... Got this one person to help me who had, like, freaking crystal homing missile, which really helped. Like, I was a little surprised. Makes me glad that I have crystal magic weapon, because that'll do a fuck ton of damage. Um, you know. Which I can't even use, because my magic's not high enough. But I was able to level up my guy a little bit, too, just to kind of boost him up. He's not at the point where you can just kind of where I can break the game in half now, like I could with uh, Demon Souls when I got to a certain point where I got like over level 200. Which I ended up losing two levels because of PvP. Um, so I, that person helped me, and of course, again, tanked. Been using the, that's like the, one of the really good sword, like really good to use like early on. But, or at least one of the best ones of the of its kind. Uh, like the two-handed, like the bigger swords that are on your shoulder. I just think it's really, really useful. Did a lot of damage. Even on the Four Kings, though, it didn't do too much. It was really my friend who was helping me out. So, thank you, sir or ma'am. I'm sorry I don't remember your name. But you helped me out a lot. Beat that, went to friggin' Gwen, and I just kind of stopped there. Because I didn't, I don't really want to uh, play through the rest of the, of, um, I don't really care to finish it one more time. Maybe when Dark Souls 2 comes out, I'll finish it. Because at that point, I might not ever play it again. Because I rarely play uh, Demon Souls that much anymore. And I might do the same on my d new Demon Souls file. Just kind of leave everyone there. And might even do that for my new Dark Souls file if I can. Just kind of leave the game on leave the final boss alone and just kind of have because I like having a full posse like that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do the four kings because I wanted to get uh inward to kind of just chill in my and the uh and the firelink shrine you know because to me that's like the main hub and I kind of like having a little posse personally if you ask me but that's just me on that little thing. And I also got the Black Knight armor. Finally got that. Something I miss, missed out on. 
I was originally going to try and do like a cute thing where I was like, oh, my first file will have the Silver Knight armor, but my second file will have the Black Knight armor. And I just kind of do something like that. But then I say, you know, what's the point? You know, so I end up getting the Black Knight armor and I'll probably upgrade. I still need to finish upgrading my f uh, Fire Sunlight Straight Sword, which will probably be my secondary weapon. The uh, Crystal um, would almost be broken if they didn't give you like 12 slots. Like that thing can break really quickly and you can't repair it. So you end up losing um, your uh, weapon. So I had to grind for, or rather farm for, I wanted to get two Sunlight Straight Swords because I really wanted, or Baldur's uh, Side Sword, sorry. Because I really wanted to um, kind of figure out like what the best course of, what the best uh, path would be. And obviously you can farm those, so that'll be a good way of trying to figure out what the best path would be for you. I'm under the impression that lightning is probably the best, so I went with that. But, yeah. Pretty much after this and this last playthrough I do with Nick on both Demon Souls and Dark Souls, I'll probably be done with both games unless I decide to do another playthrough. I'll probably just be waiting for Dark Souls 2, and that'll be that. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm done with school. I got all my finals done. So, um, With writing, I feel like I've, I've been writing. I wrote a lot this semester. Like, on a weekly basis, I was writing, like, one or two pieces. Um, so I feel like my writing's improved from a mechanics uh, standpoint. And I used this, what I learned in that class, to write a parody of on Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. Um, just sort of a short four-page uh, parody. Um, and it's not even really that funny either. It's more of like just a parody of what the theme of of Mice of Men is, of Mice and Men is. It's called Of Dreams No Mice. Um, maybe I don't know if I'll post it anywhere, but maybe if it gets if I don't know, maybe publish it or something. I think it's I actually think I really did a nice job on it. I, it just kind of flowed very well for me. Like I, it just kind of all just kind of came out. I didn't really have any trouble writing it. But yes, writing is definitely what I want to do with myself. It's become more apparent to me as I continue to write more. Uh, voice acting is still a side thing, and I still don't mind doing it. But at this point, it just kind of become just a thing I do. It's not really a focus anymore. I kind of just do it <coughs> either as a favor or, you know, just for fun. You know, I mean, I'm doing a friggin' Sims Machinima, so... Speaking of which, I did lose one role. Unfortunately, I lost the role of Tristan in Society High, so I won't be re returning for that <clears throat> probably ever, um, unless uh, I've been I'm I get told to come back, which I don't think is likely. But if that happens, I will definitely return. I did also get some more roles, some mainly reprising roles, which I think is really nice because I do kind of miss voice acting a little bit and I feel like it kind of helps me <clears throat> with my voice acting because I because with my voice acting I just kind of try to be natural and just kind of deliver the lines how I feel they should be delivered and how I would if I were in that kind of situation if I weren't who I was or just kind of I just I just kind of just react really a lot, you know, you hear a lot of people saying acting is reacting. That's definitely true in some senses. <clears throat> but yeah, so keep an eye out for that. They'll probably be updated with my um, with my uh, new stuff. And of course, all of Society High is pretty much gone entirely. All the work that I did, like the half of season one, friggin' season two, all of season two, and then starting into season three, which I think was supposed to be the finale. Uh, Desiree's um, YouTube channel, her main one, died, so... Decided to redo the entire series. And decided not to bring back the voice actors, but that's okay. Uh, you know, to each their own. I'm not mad, but... Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say on what I've been doing 
Um, I'll try to update you all on Negima and the visual novel I've been playing once I finish its quote-unquote sequel, even though it's technically the sixth. Um, once you see it, you'll probably understand what I mean by the sixth being the sequel to the first one, if you know anything about the series in general. Also, um, I'll continue with the Dark Souls stuff, maybe do some other themes. I need to do more thoughts videos, and next commentary will come probably come soon. I want to, I really want to try to get that one out of the way. But there will also be another delay because I'll need to play one of them of like the new series I want to do. As well as um the Let's Play, which I really want to try and get get working because I feel like that one will be more fun than Legacy of Goku 1. Um, be my fourth Let's Play. So, yeah, and I think I've got everything kind of under control as far as how to do it. So, yeah, that's uh definitely a dealio. I'll try to keep you guys updated more since I'm on summer break now. So, Flames of Ronicky, YouTube Stasuke signing out. I'll see you guys later.